milestones. And with that, I want to introduce our first guest. Uh, our first guest on the show today is Tim Benz from 105.9 The X. Tim, thanks for being here with us. Look forward to being painted black and gold. <laughs> Great. Same we can arrange time. that. Very <laughs> comfortable with that. I feel like you have a nice 105.9 The X shirt on already. I don't know if we want to mess with yeah, that. Normally when I'm on TV, I, I, well, I don't even have pants on. We have a desk. So, you know, this is, this is outside of my comfort zone. You can wear my shorts. You can wear whatever yeah. you want. But I do have a suit like yours up top most of the time. Okay. So. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you for, for being on the show. It's, it's enjoyable, you know, hearing your radio show, seeing uh, you on WTAE from time to time. You do a Sunday night sports show. You also sit at the anchor desk sometimes to, right. to, do, to do sports. So we do see you a little bit all over the city, which is great. How did you decide to go into to sports journalism? Well, being a real, real sports fan when I was growing up, I love sports. Even though I didn't grow up in Pittsburgh, I grew up a Steeler fan, Pirate fan, Penguin fan, Pitt fan for Penny. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, even though I ended up going to Syracuse, but uh, there wasn't much call for whatever reason. I still haven't figured it out for five foot six quarterbacks in the National Football League. So, <laughs> with that being said, I figured the best way to go into communications for me and to be around sports and be around sort of uh, public life and TV and radio, things that I grew up uh, really enjoying, that the best way to do it was to be in it as opposed to being the athlete that's being covered. Why not cover the athletes? And uh, it's kind of a typical story for a lot of us who wind up in this profession. That's great. Now, how did you get your break? Were you the sports editor of your high school newspaper or college newspaper? You get your Station break? like this, actually. Okay. That's uh, you know, big reason why I decided to do the show today is because there was a community TV station where I grew up in uh, Guilford, Connecticut, which is a little bit outside of New Haven, sort of mm -hmm. like the Yale area of Connecticut and up the coast. And um, I got to do play-by-play. -play. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to do uh, a sports talk show, minimal as it may have been. Uh, I think it was in the public library with me and <laughs> two guys who were twice my age. And right. it was just a fun way to get a start, and that gave me a good resume tape, and I had the idea of how to put a reel together and how to uh, sort of develop myself even at a very, very young age. And uh, I went to Syracuse University, which has a really good broadcasting program, mm -hmm. and got involved with the student radio station there. And pretty good people have come out of there, like Bob Costas and Marv Albert and Mike Tirico and Sean McDonough, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, um, you know, I, I had the opportunity to get into the real business once I came out because I had a pretty good uh, track record of doing things when I was young. So right. to your point, it's good to get involved when you're at a young age. Yeah, that's great. That's a great endorsement of getting involved, right? Yeah. That's, that's very important. Um, what's been your trajectory? I know that now you have um, what a lot of people, I think, would consider a dream job, even though it's very early in the morning to do the radio from 6 to 10 a.m., maybe not as much of a, a dream job, but it's, it's definitely a, a good position you have there. What's been your trajectory within Pittsburgh? What positions have you held? What kind of got you to this good time slot that you do? Well, I got lucky. Uh, to be honest, I really got lucky on the path to get here because, as I mentioned before, this is the city where I always wanted to be, and I think some people occasionally might have a tough time believing that, you know, a kid from Connecticut didn't want to go to New York or Boston, but uh, my dad's from here. My dad was born here in Pittsburgh, and as I mentioned, I grew up being a Pittsburgh fan, so with that being said, I always hoped to get my career path to here somehow. I interned at Channel 11 when I was up at Syracuse during my, uh, my junior year, and that helped a little bit, certainly, and uh, the guy that eventually hired me from Syracuse after school out to Salt Lake also hired me in Columbus and then hired me out here at ESPN Radio 1250. Right. Uh, he since got back into the business behind the mic, hosting shows in Salt Lake again in New York and uh, Detroit for a little while, but once he left Pittsburgh, I stayed and was very happy to be here, and I'm thrilled that I've had the opportunity to cover sports and now do a more overarching talk show on 105.9 The X. It's not just sports exclusive anymore, but uh, still, obviously, with us being the flagship for the Penguins, we do a lot of sports talk. That is true. You definitely cover a lot of random topics as well in the right. morning, which is great. Um, a lot of people are probably, you know, driving into work, you know, they're listening to you on the radio, and they're thinking... Tim Benz, like what, what's a typical day in the life of Tim Benz? What is he doing throughout the course of the day? I'm guessing you get up really, really early uh, and then do the show. What, what kind of things do you do throughout yeah, the day? Yeah, I get the when do you sleep question a lot. <laughs> um, and, and usually the answer is now while we're taping this. So if I pass out, it's got nothing to do with the content of the show. <laughs> I'm just really tired. Um, usually what I do is I get up at about 4.45, 4.30 in the morning, something like that. And then... Uh, prepare for the show as much as I can, but most of my preparation actually ha happens the day before or okay. the night before. I do the show from 6 until 10, and I cram together a lot of prep work that may have happened overnight that I didn't see. Right. You know, I'll watch some news, I'll read some papers, I'll get on some internet sites as fast as I can in the morning. Um, you know, and I occasionally might blow through a 
a red light or two on Fifth Avenue. If there's any police officers watching, I apologize in advance. I try to make the yellow as best as I can. But uh, I, I get in, watch, read, and listen to as much as I can before I even get on the air. And then once I get on the air, it's, it's go time for about four hours. Then afterwards, uh, part of my duties beyond just working for 105.9 The X, I actually might paycheck comes from Clear Channel, and there's six radio stations in our cluster. So I do the sports reporting for all six stations. They can all use my uh -huh. stuff. So with that being the case, I cover the Pirates, uh, the Penguins, the Steelers, Pitt, uh, all the local sports happenings during the day. I'm usually at, and I also get interviews for my show the next day, and um, you know, like I said, I'll crash in the middle of the afternoon and wake back up again. You know, if there's a good show on prime time that I know people will be talking about, I'll watch that. If Pitt's playing on a Thursday night, I'll, I'll talk about that. And certainly on Sundays, uh, you know, I did the post-game show for the Steelers, too. So, like for most Pittsburghers, Sunday, all day during the fall is Steeler time for me. So. Right, absolutely. Now, I know um, just from seeing a really great a snapshot of you, uh, you were actually there at the Super Bowl last year. You were probably within 20, 15, 10 feet of Santonio Holmes when he caught the yeah. winning touchdown. What was that experience like? What was going through your head when that was happening? Well, that was, it was actually kind of a, a bizarre day. Um, my credential got screwed up. <laughs> um, at the Super Bowl, I was supposed to have different access than what I had, and through you know some help with the media relations guys over at the Steelers and the sort of hectic nature that goes on with the Super Bowl. I mean, my goodness, there's ten times as many media people there, it feels like, as there are fans. <laughs> so you can certainly understand something getting screwed up along the way. I, I went from not having the right access to do my job for post-game interviews to having more than I deserved. <laughs> and I was able to be down on the field during the game itself uh, for the second half. I actually could have been down there for the whole game, but I want to see the first half up top. And I was glad because where I was, I got a great view of the Harrison touchdown run from way up top. And when I say up top, I mean the pyrotechnics that went off for the Springsteen concert. I was ne that's where my ear was. <laughs> so for the Did you still hear? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. I, I, was, I was kind of doing the rest of the day deaf, but that's all right. So, you know, <laughs> the pyrotechnics are going off in the first half, and I went down for the second half because Raymond James is a big place, and there's a lot of people there. And I said, I, I better just be down there for the second half of the game, and if the Steelers win, it's all going to happen on the field. Uh, you know, all the interviews are going to happen on the field. They told me in advance they're going to rope off the 50-yard line mm -hmm. area, the 50-yard area, and that's where the trophy was going to come out. And I said, I better be down there for that. And it was tough to find anywhere to really see the game. I mean, you're more or less shoulder to shoulder, one or two people deep mm -hmm. with the photogs right. who were supposed to be down there. And um, I just kind of kept moving back almost accidentally towards the end zone. And when the Steelers were coming down that drive towards yeah. the end zone where I was standing, I said, well, I'm not going to leave now because <laughs> something could happen right in front of me. Yeah. And sure enough, uh, if San Antonio didn't catch that ball, I would have or at least I would have tried. <laughs> okay. Mine was the next set of hands right there. It wasn't Dominique Rogers Cromartie's hands. It was my hands that were the next closest. So. That's great. It's probably better for everybody that San Antonio, that San Antonio got, got yeah. the bat. That's right, absolutely. That's you good. play flag football with me, so you know. I, mean, yeah. I can be a little spotty. That's yeah, you're good. You're good. That's actually a good segue <laughs> to my next question, which is, uh, Tim, I know you're really active with the Pittsburgh Sports League. I've yeah. played a little bit of football with you, played softball, many good battles against you. And uh, I mean, you're a shorter man, but you hit the ball a good 300 feet. I mean, you're a good hitter. Um, now, that's that, been a while. <laughs> that being said, are, because of your role within the sports community, are people ever harder, uh, harder on you when you're playing sports? Do you ever get heckled at all? Oh, yeah, I get heckled a lot. Um, I try to keep my mouth shut a lot more. Now, yeah. I've been around for a while. Maybe the show has increased in popularity and people know who I am, so I just try to give a lot less ammunition. It's basically, it, it's, it goes one of three ways. It's almost a three-way split, split. There are people who know who I am and like the show and are probably nicer to me than they are to other people. There are people who know who I am and don't like me or don't like the show and are harder <laughs> on me. And then there are people who have no idea who I am and could give. And they just okay. think, who's the short guy running around out there? <laughs> who does he think he is? So right. it's probably an even three-way split. Okay, that's good. 